bad news gamers, there's an easy mode in Elden Ring and I've been using it. Playing the game with all the health your character is supposed to have? What am I? Some sort of casual gamer? Trying to find what challenge runs would be fun for players at a moderate skill level? Yes! Today we're living on the edge though, and only fighting bosses when we are below 20% of our maximum health. And to make sure we really feel the pain, we'll do all remembrances. This one's really, really hard. I don't know if we'll actually finish. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Make sure you're subscribed. This 20% health run goes out to the 20% of you who are actually subscribed. If you subscribe on this video, the next video will be dedicated to you. Now let's get that health low. It's time for a very long night. Because I Since this build is so edgy, I thought I would name him after the edgiest boy in fiction, Shadow the Hedgehog. But there isn't enough room for all the letters, so I just kept the important ones. Ow! The Edge. Let's get started. Cowabunga, Limgrave, Crafting Kit, Horse, Whetstone, Save Alex, and Get the Physic Flask. Since the first Physic tier would give us 50% health in healing, we can't use it. And grab the Stamina and Charged Attack Physic tier. This is all starting pretty standard, and we don't have a method yet to get that Edge. We did grab some flowers, though. It's a little weird, more on that later. First, imagine edging. In Fort Height, we fight the Fort Knight for the number one victory royale, and more importantly, a method to get us to the edge, the Bloody Slash Ash of War. The fact that it will also help us kill Grail is just a fun bonus. We need a broadsword or just a sword or a blade of any kind will do it, so I scoop up one from the round table hold. Some final setup stuff, I didn't know you could just throw hands at Ronnie until she drops the spirit calling bell. I'm definitely going to do this for future runs, I don't know if it's faster, but it's super funny and Ronnie can't die, so no harm, no foul. Speaking of foul, we need a foul foot for the big bad dragon, and it's also the first time we get to edge. We're going to be doing this a lot. It's about 24 seconds of pulling our sword until some fluid comes out. It's something I'm not sure everyone wants to see. That's why we blurred it out. Everyone wants to watch us edge with the bad dragon though, and you can see more of it by googling bad dragon edging session on your work computer. Nearby, we pop into Fort Faroth for the other piece of the Dectus medallion. Kale has a second thing we need, the recipe for holy pots, which includes those flowers we picked up earlier. Then another pickle and bamboozle that knight's cavalry for more runes. We need a lot of money for what I plan on doing with this build. For the edgy build to work, though, we need some tools. I have to have my tools! Pots are good, I can buy one from the merchant by the bridge, then two fingers in a hole, yeah that should be nice and helpful on the edge. Jarberg has more pots, that's pretty great, and after we kill all this we can duke it out with Ensha for another important piece of our puzzle. Unfortunately when you start the Ensha fight, you're at full health, so we have to get to the edge, but it's hard in the time Ensha is coming after us. I regret to inform you, we died to Ensha, didn't know what happened when you lose to Ensha because I've never done it before. You just get sent to the last grace you stopped at outside the round table hold. But the third try we accidentally hit them while spraying our fluids everywhere and and get their armor. Every piece of the Royal Remain set gives you 2 HP of healing per second when you're below 18% of your max health. Four pieces of armor stack up to 8 HP of regen per second, which is actually kind of good when you're rocking around 300 HP. It's more than 2%. The Weeping Peninsula gives us another pot, and more importantly, the Faith Boosting tier. With two fingers and the plus 10 from the Physic tier, we can hit 31 Faith. For a bit more damage, we have to kill an Erdtree Avatar, but it's being guarded by a sniper in the Old Palace Ruins. I tried to get around it, but no. Boom. Hitchhop. So I guess we just need to get some defense. Near the Warmaster Shack Grace, a death bird will fly down at night, and here's where our setup pays off. With plus 15 faith from our boosts and the starting 16 faith, our holy pots are strong enough to kill one with two blows. Boom. That gives us maybe the most important part of this build, the Blue Feathered Branch Sword. It gives you a 50% defense boost when you're below 20% of your HP. It's a little funky though. Perf Extra Life, here's how it works. It's 50% plus your other damage negation over two, or basically half your regular damage negation plus 50%. That's not how it works though, but for now, it works fine. See, we can take some shots from the Minotaur Sniper and get to the Erdtree Avatar. Since we started as a prophet, we have the Catch Flame, Spell, and Prophet when we burn down that Erdtree Avatar that has negative 40% fire resistance. Pretty much free. Also, it's an Erdtree Avatar, so you know, it's extra free. It gives us runes in the Holy Damage here for 20% damage boost. So when we have to kill another Death Bird, yeah, there's another one, uh, we get to do more damage. But since this one's in Lernia, it still takes three pots to get us the Red Feathered Branch Sword, which, when below 20% health, will give us a 20% damage boost, it's twice as good as the Ritual Sword boost, and the Blue Feather Branch Sword is 66% better than the Ritual Sword Talisman. This is gonna go great. You sure about that?
Market Fight lets us show off the first two pieces of this edgy lad, the blue branch sword and the Ancha set. Unfortunately, we can't have both branch talismans until Margit is dead, but look at how we trade. We can take a few hits from Margit even with this low of HP. Oh, also, this is a big thing people were confused about in chat. Why did I invest in Vigor? It's pretty simple, and I thought it was super obvious, but enough people asked that I'm gonna clarify. What is a bigger number? 20% of 500 or 20% of 1900? Take your time. While you do that, we're gonna be using the Bleed Sword on Margit. He highly resists holy damage. We haven't upgraded anything, and the Red Feather damage boost isn't a go yet. So Bleed is the best tool for this fool. Dang, that regen is really, really solid when you don't have a lot of health. We get the win and another pocket, so we get the power of red and blue together. It's purple power. Time to go to Altus because we can become even more powerful. Raya Lucaria key, get the Bellum Grace, go up the elevator and grab the bell bearing two from the sealed tunnel. We stop by the merchant shack really quick for this grace, and then guess what we're fighting? Did you guess a third death right bird? Because yeah, it is. Literally half the bosses we fought so far are just death right birds. And this one has a bunch of snails that aren't necessarily dangerous, but they mess with us by putting a bunch of hitboxes around an arena against a boss that already has really chaotic hitboxes. So this is where we discover death and more specifically how annoying it is to die to a boss and reapply our edge. Overall, if it takes about 30 seconds, let's say we die 10 times. That's five minutes added to the run. If we die 100 times, that's 50 minutes. Will we die that many times? Not to the death right bird. We did die three times though, so you know, minute and a half. Eventually we just stay slower and get those headshots. That'll give us the twin bird kite shield, which we can put on our back for another 5% attack boost and 10% defense boost, which gets halved to 5% if the blue branch worked like Vextra Life said it does, but it doesn't because they're liars. I'd say Vextra Life is accurate about 95% of the time, but that 5% it's wrong is so frustrating that everyone's gonna remember the time it screwed them over and hate them forever. Time to grind up. We need a lot of levels if this build is gonna work. <laughs> We have enough smithing stones to level up our casting seal a little bit. This is going to be a casting build, as the damage buffs from low health aren't specific to physical weapon damage. So if any build can make spells good, this is the one. The Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave has some more smithing stones, but I messed up on the shortcut fall and took falling damage. That's more than 20%, so even when it isn't an auto death, it is for us. Second time, we fall and don't die. I guess I just threaded the needle where I fell. The Crystallion we could burn, but I kind of just want to use the shield. The Crystallion's weak to strike damage. How many times are we going to be able to beat a boss with a shield like Captain Goddamn America? Couple quick ones, the Tibia Mariner will give us some death spaghetti we can use later to get a spell that does strike damage. It's a Tibia. Mariner. Not really worth mentioning. Tibia Mariner 2 in Altus is worth more runes, and it can summon the funny sand skeleton. We just use Catch Flame and back up when it does the water. Not too bad there either. Nerd Juice is next. Bleed is dangerous since it would basically just kill us if it procced one time, so let's not let that happen and kill him first. Patch is next. He's Patches. That's free. We get the pickle recipe to make sure we're in the money for the rest of the run. Making money is important if you're always on death's door. Healthcare ain't free in the lands between. Can you imagine living in the kind of hellhole that would wouldn't have free affordable health care for all of its citizens? Message. We can make more money with what I call the Putrid Avatar Oreo. Here's how you make it. Burn down the Putrid Avatar in Kaled for the fire boosting tier. It's 100% weak to fire. The rot inside makes it even worse than regular avatars. Then you go to the abandoned cave and fight the clean rot knights. Are they lovers, sisters, or just gals being pals? What's your clean rot knight headcanon? Mine is that they get distracted by skeletal malicious spirit ashes we got from the Tibia Mariner. Then we sneak up behind them and hit them with catch flame, which they are 20% weak to. So so it absolutely melts them. It's a very specific cat cannon, but it's mine, and I love it. The two drop the Golden Scarab Talisman for 20% more runes. Final step to the Oreo is the Putrid Avatar in the Dragon Barrel, which has a lot more health than the one in Kaled, but drops an absolute dump truck's worth of runes. And you have more fire damage and get paid more when it dies. There you go, Avatar Oreo. It's like a regular Oreo, but the chocolate cookies are replaced with trees that have IBS. It's about time we took out a shard bearer, so let's go have Gostok open the gates and reward him with death. The danger path at danger health goes fine. Blue feather carries us through. There's even another pot here. Maybe I'll want them later. Godric goes great. We get some skeletons out and they're also close to death. If you need an early spirit ash just to distract some bosses, they're pretty good since they come back after they die as long as nobody hits them on the ground. So they distract and we burn a bunch. Godric has some decent fire resistance in phase two, but all of our buffs make this fire rip roaring hot. So we burn that weirdo down. Renala next, that means Raya Lucaria, which actually takes 
takes a bit of time. Red Wolf of Radagon goes fine. He has almost as few hit points as we do, and the Skellingtons do their job as nice little distractions. A brief detour to get the Beast Sling spell from Garonk, definitely just a normal giant monster priest, never gonna be a problem later. It's a spell that deals strike damage. Renala is weakest to physical damage, so this should go great, but it kind of doesn't. Phase one, we only get her halfway down in the first cycle. Then we don't get her in the second cycle. We have to do three cycles for phase one Renala. What the hell? Our damage should be absolutely cracked with all the boosts. Why is it bad? Maybe it's better in phase two, but it sucks there. Too. Uh, at least we can take some damage and regen back up to 18% thanks to the Encha set. Renala loves summoning, and we're not dealing enough damage to make this a fast fight. Beast Sling might be great in PvP, but it is dog shit for bosses. Really awful stuff. It took six minutes to beat Renala. That's really, really slow, and I hate it. For Grail, I didn't learn my lesson, but instead doubled down and grabbed Flame Grant Me Strength for 20% more physical and fire damage for 30 seconds. So that's 20% from the spell, 20% from the Red Feather, 5% from the Shield. Stack all together, that's 51% more damage. Oh, and since Grail takes 50% more damage when you hit the head, that would be 120% more damage. And it still sucks. It's terrible. It's slow. Another long fight. It's four minutes. We win, but boy, I hope this isn't a bad sign for things to come. Before we fight O'Neill, this clean rot knight is nice enough to help us edge. Thanks, lady. It's always nice when someone else helps you get there. O'Neill has a bunch of ads in the fight that aren't too much of a problem, so we get them dead, then die. We stack up the Flame Roosting tier, Flame Grant Me Strength, Red Feather Sword, and Twin Bird Kite Shield. 20% times 20% times 20% times 5% should be around an 80% boost, and it sucks. We just back up and throw the spell, eventually we win, but y'all, seriously, why isn't this working? Why are bosses not just exploding? We have 30 faith on a plus 12 seal, which isn't like amazing, but for this point in the game, should be about right. Why is this so terrible? Moving on, I guess. Let's uh, get a spell that specifically does a good job with percentage boosts. It's a little mini quest to get the pest threads, but the longer the journey takes to get it, the more fun it will be to shoot them. On the way, we talk to Gowry, die to gravity in the town of Horsery, finish the town of Horsery, cure Millicent, die to gravity again, trying to get the shortcut, talk to Millicent in the shack, talk to her in the Erdtree Gazing Hill, die to gravity when, okay, come on, really? This height is a death? Come, come, but really? Really? Shaded Castle, grab the arm, give Millicent the arm, then go back and buy the pest threads, but we don't have enough runes. Ugh, okay, there's something else I wanted to do anyway. We're going into the unsightly catacombs, and boy, they're not kidding. Has anyone in here ever tried dusting? At the end of the catacombs, we fight Trisha and her misbegotten, which locks us into a corner, and we can't move. Neat. Next attempt, we try to walk backwards and flame sing until they just kind of run into it. I thought I wanted the Trisha ashes. She gives out a buff that gives you 90% damage resistance, but since it's an aura buff and we're getting another aura buff later whoops we never end up actually summoning her she's not that great of a spirit ash she's not aggressive enough to pull focus which is kind of their main job now we at least have the runes to buy pest threads we take it to radon he's got a nice big body for us to shoot our ropes on but they still kind of suck they're better when i get closer but it's really risky to get in close pest threads isn't the fastest cast and we haven't been able to invest in decks he's really low as we get him to phase two and we can close him out pretty fast but damn i wish these were better all right, well, this should be good against dragons like Exicus. We don't need his Rock Breath or anything. He's just worth a decent amount of runes. But yeah, again, damage, not there. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. We are out of the first time and die another time just for good measure. It's really awful. I probably should have just left, but I was determined to get vengeance. I really, really don't know why this isn't all hitting harder. Ever forward, it's time for the Tree Sentinel, who's smaller than the last bosses we fought, so we're gonna do less damage with the Pest Threads and die. Second attempt, I literally didn't finish the fight. I just quit out. This is terrible, I'm miserable, and it's only getting worse. Since he resists fire by 40%, maybe we'll just go get some holy damage. This is a really low intelligence move. Not only do I waste my time doing Corn Dogs quest, once we get the holy disc that people said is amazing after I dunked on it in the Elements run, we literally don't have the intelligence to cast it. You need 13. You fool! 
Uh, okay, uh, we got holy damage pots. Let's go pick some pots up. Pick up some flowers. Just calm down. Everything's fine. Golden Val will boost all damage by 15%, so I pick that up and avoid Anastia by just running away until she gives up and leaves. So, 20% boost from the Branch Sword, 20% from the Holy Tear, 5% from the Shield, and 15% from Golden Val. That's a nice 73% damage boost. Pretty good, right? No, it's awful. Just like... How? What do I have to do? Give up? For now, at least. Yeah, edging was a multiple day thing, imagine that. Starting up stream two, we try again and we die again. It's terrible. So let's try something else. Edging into Radon's hole, fighting the Mimic here and spraying ropes all over myself, sure. It's pretty good at catching the NPCs even if the damage isn't great because of their small body. We're here because casting sucks. Spells are terrible, weapons are always better. And with a larval tier, we can respec with the Moon Mommy to get into a strength dex build and use the commander's standard. It's a decent halberd, but more importantly, gives us an aura boost of 20% more damage and 20% more defense, which of course is then halved to 10% by the blue feathered branch sword. So overall stacking, we've got 24% physical resistance from the armor, 20% from the aura, 10% from the shield, 10% from the opaline hard tier, which adds up to 64 and is halved to 32, then added to the 50, from the blue branch sword for 82% damage resistance. But uh, it doesn't because I guess it just kind of doesn't work that way. We need to level up the standard. To do that, we'll go to Mount Gelmnir, grab some volcanic stones on the way up. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. There's a somber stone six we can grab, then climb some ladders. What a thrill and enter Volcano Manor. There's some somber stones on the way, but there's also a godskin noble blocking our path to Rykard. This goes uh, poorly as well. Again, let's do math on the damage boosts. 20% from the feather, 20% from the standard, 5% from the shield. That's 51%. Should be massive hits on a plus six somber weapon. It's okay but it's not good enough for us to survive taking hits with this little HP. Back to the tree sentinel and good news, the damage is better here. The noble is still gonna be a problem, but at least we can get through the tree sentinel and into the city. Now we've climbed a wall, it's time to climb a mountain. I would like some more helpful assistance, but leveling up a Grave Glove Ward Spirit Ash sounds painful, and that's coming from someone who is willingly losing 80% of their health before every fight. So, quick Ronnie quest. Go to Caria Manor and let Loretta take us to the edge on the way in. We thank her by hitting her with a stick until she's dead. It's like a thank you card, but sharper. Celavis has a nice looking doll collection, and I'm thinking the Jar Wright puppet would suit us really nicely. It's pretty cheap, it's silly, and it does great damage. So, talk to Ronnie, head to the Night's Sacred Ground, grab the Finger Slayer Blade, give it to Ronnie, that kills Celibus. So so... oh. Look, you can still buy the Jarai puppet from his corpse, but now it costs two Starlight Shards, and that's annoying. We can get some other puppets on the way through the Ronnie quest, we'll just grab those. Incel River Main, say hi to Phalanx Demon's Holes, and fight the Nox to get the Nox. The Nox sisters are pretty good spirit ash. Nothing spectacular, but the fact that there's two of them is a big plus. Somberstone 7, so we can literally raise our standards than the last level warts we need to max those sisters out. There's another boss we can kill for some big runes, but I grab the sleep pot recipe first. I would say I'm surprised we're grabbing so many pots, but allegedly it's great for chronic pain. No pun intended. We can grab the Somberstone 9 and 8 and head into the Divine Tower of Caled, then fall off and fall in when we're inside for two gravity deaths. So falling just has to be part of our edging, otherwise we can't come down here. Godskin Apostle waits at the bottom, we put it to sleep, get our huge buffs, do a big charged attack, and die. Yeah, the damage still isn't enough to make this free even with the Apostle going to sleep. We died two more times before giving up and going to try something else. We'll hit up the capital and actually progress the game, I guess, if we have to. The Earth Tree Avatar gives us enough runes to level up our mind a little bit to summon the Nox sisters, then we unleash them on the Godfrey Shade. The Whip Swords don't do a ton of damage, but they're nice distractions. Our physical resistance is also looking really good against this dude. We're able to take a couple hits. First try win, that's a nice welcome change. On the way up to Morgoth, I bully the Black Knife Assassin a little. Our damage is at least good enough for her. That's nice. It's nice against Morgoth too. We just have to wait for safe openings and then get hit by a very questionable hitbox from that Holy Spear. That of course staggers us into another sword swipe. Love that. 
Next attempt goes better. Morgoth's Great Rune will be a big help, turning our 1900 max HP into 2470, which turns our 20% limit from 380 into 494. That's a pretty big difference considering our defensive buffs. On the way there, we get jump scared by the Fell Twins doing their best impression of High Lord Wolnir, but much like the Vape King, if you know they're coming, they can't do very much to you. It's just two omens at the same time, and the omens are easy. We get it activated, but we'll save our rune arcs for the really tough custom later and make our way through the four Biden lands. It's a malarkey area. I make the same bad pun every time, but hey, it's better than another double entendre, right? Walk hard. Hard. It's mountain time, which is tricky for me. I'm normally an hour ahead of that. The Earth Tree Avatar drops a lot of runes. Let's take advantage. Borealis is the worst dragon in the game. Well, worst standard dragon. Its roar just hits you if you're by the face. It just does. You can't roll, you just get hit. Our defenses are good enough to live through it, but the whiffs are miserable. After duking it out for about two minutes, it activates questionable hitbox. Does its chin have an extended hitbox? I'm taking the chin off, it kills. The chin kills. Yeah. Does kill. It's quite heavy, okay, back again. Die again. Neat. And then after a nice 10 minutes of battling out against Borealis, we get the money. Fire Giant is a good amount of runes and progress. Edging his toes is working pretty well, but things get a little too hot and we finish early. Next attempt, we actually can take a few physical hits. Amazing how effective the blue branch is. If you actually started at full health and use this as a tool to give yourself enough time to heal off, I think it would be a pretty good talisman. In phase two, we get a crit and put a little sting in his eye. After we get hit, we have to be careful, but with 342 HP being the top of our 18% that the Royal Remains will heal off, we get back to, quote, full health in about 43 seconds. It's another part of this build that kind of hits, kind of doesn't. Speaking of hitting, we hit the giant a few more times, and the edging benefits us with a huge load of runes. Now I think we have enough damage to show that Godskin Noble Who's boss. All right, Godskin loser, bring it on. It. Okay, so we'll just summon the sisters after he goes night night, then turn out his lights with some big damage. Finally got him dead, and we get paid again. Lots of extra bosses for runes, you think it would start paying off eventually. But not really. As we edge into the castle's hole, Nile and I have a competition. Who is better at using the commander's standard and summoning two ghostly soldiers? His ghosts die first, so that's a point in our favor, or maybe two points depending on how you're counting. We even have enough time to heal back up and reapply our standard buff, but it's not enough. The dude's just too aggressive, and kind of like Borealis, he has attacks that you just don't get to dodge if you're too close. Love that? Try again. Kill the ghosts, buff the gals, and hit him when we can. It's kind of the standard way we do things now, and will let us take command of the game. We already grabbed the other piece of the Halic Tree Medallion when we got the Royal Remains set, so let's just head in and take out Anastia for an Ancient Somber Stone. The Putrid Avatar up the hill should be pretty free. Okay, well, uh, attempt two was pretty free. What's another 30 seconds stroking the sword when you're among friends? Theodorx is worth a lot of runes, and the best part is if you play your cards right, you don't even have to fight him. Just bait down the octopus and... Let them fight. However, like most kaiju fights, there's a lot of collateral damage, and we die a couple times. But maybe we just need to be like the humans who help Godzilla against the bad monsters. We're like a tiny little ant biting Theo's ankles. But its stance breaks well enough to give the octopus a chance. Theo's dead, runes are in our pocket. I think we're hard enough now. Let's finish things off. Don't look at the runtime, this is gonna go great. Farama Zula, here we go! The Godskin duo can be intimidating, but we bring Bernie and apply our standard buff. Oh, by the way, that buff applies to every ally who's close to us. Probably should have brought that up earlier. It also gives us something to do during the rollout, which is great. My ADHD doesn't like waiting it out. We can reapply it to take the chunky down, then a skinny, then a chunky for the win. Swag jump landed. Bird run should be great. The birds actually go fine, but the dragon decides to use the fire that's too fast to outrun if you're not on horseback. In the area, you can't be on horseback. Pretty cool. Love that. We made it through the second try. Draconic 7 Sentinel isn't great the first try. We have to reset the edge. Best strategy second time is breaking the stance as much as we can with the stance breaking tier. If the enemy has less time to fight you, you die less. It just works. But we're running low on time. Weirdly, taking 30 seconds every time we die to reapply our buffs and running through the game right on the edge of death is making this run take a while. 
Who could have guessed? I came back with a cold, so obviously we're gonna die a lot fighting Malekith. The first try goes bad. Second try, we're really close. Third try happens so fast, we just walk in and die. Basically what happens? We summon, immediately dodge a swipe, hope one of our sisters will hit him so we can get the standard buff, and then we start swinging. Our damage is fine, again, not as fine as I think it should be, but it, yeah, it's fine. The problem lies in Malekith's weirdo movements. Sometimes it seems like he's looking one way, and then he'll just turn. Sometimes you'll roll into an attack, but his body will push you into an active hitbox. Also, if you crit into phase two, you don't go to the second position of phase two. You just stay at the position you stabbed him in, and that's bad. It ruins the free punish from the front flip. Overall, we took 14 L's here. It sucked. Here's the winning run, though. We get the ladies in, run away, and power up. For some reason, he's focused on one of the sisters super hard, and we can ram our spear into the rear while he does. Take a quick hit from the rocks before phase two. That's not great. Big spin after he does the flip. We don't get the stance break there. We don't get it after the shockwave attack either. Finally, we do get it after a backflip punish, and that's some really nice damage. Then just dodge the basic combo, punish that, and the double spin for the single win. Easy peasy. Just, you know, ignore the 14 times I died. In the Ashen Cap, I dipped into the sewer super fast. We can't linger in the sewer for too long with all these open wounds. Just need the Crimson Amber Medallion plus two and it's 8% more health or an extra 30 HP after our edging. It's not gonna let us live a second hit but it could help us live one big hit, maybe. Gideon Offnir should be free if we can beat him the first time. The damage should be good, the reach should be good. Oh, f okay. <laughs> uh, uh oh. <laughs> I'm in danger. Gideon is only free the first time, when he doesn't shut the hell up and you can bully him for being a nerd. But when he's not talking, he's launching an endless parade of hitboxes that would all turn us into Taco Bell lettuce. Actually, it went fine the second try. That was really scary though. Let's just kill Godfrey on our first go. Standard strategy with our standard. Summon the sisters, buff everyone up, and run away. Much like the shady Godfrey, our physical defense is our best defensive stat. We can actually take a couple of stray hits here and there and heal it back up. While Godfrey hits like a dump truck, I feel like he's less of a vigor check and more of a DPS check. When he starts going for phase 1.5 or 2.5 doing the big stomp, that's the test, and our DPS passes that test. We finish him off and don't have to worry about the shockwave phase. Still pretty stressful though, and Radagon is even more stressful. Let's just take it easy for a bit before killing God. Remember that Volcano Manor Noble we couldn't kill? Yeah, let's go do that. With better damage and slightly better resistances, we pull it out pretty easily. Not enough runes to level up, so I just bought a few rune arcs before heading to Rykard Town. Oh, and once again, forgot to get the grace before grabbing the spear. I always do this. What a silly goose move. We have to run all the way back through the manor again to get back into the fight, but at least it's gonna go great. Narrating the Rykard fight in an interesting way is hard. You get the spear, you use the spear, you try not to get hit. That's kind of it. First attempt, we got hit in the second phase. Second attempt, we whiff a few swings with the spear, but eventually get it done anyway. This dude stinks, I don't like talking about him. But he does give us his boss hole, which we can cash in for one of two options. The Blasphemous Blade does great fire damage, decent physical damage, has an Ash of War which has huge range, stance pressure, and huge fire damage. It also knocks humanoid sized enemies on their ass, like Melania. But it heals you 30% of your HP when you hit someone with it, so we can't use it. Uh, Rikard's Rancor is the spell he does. It does a lot of damage to us, maybe it would do a lot of damage to bosses. Things get lit in Not Chronic and we can enter the dream of a moose. Maybe we were always in the dream of a moose. Ever think about that? It's dreaming of itself, the regal ancestor spirit, a little vain. We can charge in and hit it. At the end, it's about to heal, which isn't dangerous, but it could be annoying, so we just nip that in the bud and don't let it heal. We'll suffer karmic punishment for that later. There's a few easy bosses we have to do for all remembrances. Maybe easy isn't the right word. Uh, scaled lower than Melania is? Yeah, that's better. Valiant Gargoyles first. We get really low when one has a big tummy ache on the ground, but we get out right before we get poisoned. The Healing over time would mitigate that, but wouldn't totally shut poison down. Kind of a downside of having a big health pool, the percentage-based damage is really gonna mess us up. First one dies, heal a little bit, smack the second one, and make our way to the deep root depths. The Prince of Death's staff scales with intelligence and faith. I was gonna grab it when we would do that terrible mixed caster idea. It would let us use death spells and also incantations with another seal, but thank God we're not doing that. For some reason, I went to go get the bell bearing three to level it up. What was I cooking? Fius champs get cooked, the standard absolutely 
wrecks the first two. It does get a little close when there are three of them, but we clutch it out. Let's get lit again, or at least light up the liturgical town. What if a town was a boss? Better yet, a platforming boss. We fell twice. Sad day. But the archers don't kill us. We kill them and get killed by a black knife assassin instead. Much better. Thankfully, the torches stay lit even if you die, so we can just sprint to the last one and make our way to the Halleck Tree to take on our next boss. Not Melania, or even Loretta. It's Bubble Guy. This guy blows giant bubbles, and when he blows, it makes it hard to maintain our edge. There's also rot flowers, and if we get rotted, it's basically over for us. Only two deaths, though, that's nice. I grab the ancient dragon smithing stone for the second run in a row, and yeah, I think it really makes the misbegotten worse at chasing you somehow. Swag jump landed, let's take on Loretta too. It should be pretty straightforward, the standard is a decent weapon, and at this point, it's dealing decent damage. Should be good enough to carry us through the rest of the run, as long as I don't do anything stupid. Let's make some bad decisions, I want you Okay, so let me explain why I'm making us a Faith Int caster. The spells should be good. If spells were ever good, we could use the Pest Threads on Placidious Axe, Rykard's Rancor, and the big fire damage on Melania, Radagon, and the Elden Beast. It should be good great. But after getting the Golden Order seal, maxing it out with big faith and intelligence, and using the not on Placidious Axe, it's still bad. Not terrible, not nearly as good as I remember it being, and certainly not as good as it should be with our low health damage boosts. It's it's really, really awful. So was the run back to Placidious Axe. I fell twice just getting back to it. Why can't there be a stake here? What is this? Any other FromSoft game? I kept enough physical stats to use the Commander's standard buff, so maybe we can just break its stance, then try to nut while it's down, but nah, it doesn't really work either. I guess let's go try something else. It's a brief detour through Elifel, where we get killed on the way to Triple Rings of Light. That's like the Light Disc, but there's three of them and they're bigger. So, if Light Disc good, which people said it was on the Holy Run, if we made three of them and they were all bigger, that would have to be good. Oh, and we took a gravity to death and got ganged up on by the Hallowed Tree soldiers at the Grace 2, by the way. Back to Placidious Axe, we have three Holy Buzzsaws, and it's better. I think the stacking boost from the Holy Tier and the Golden Order seal helps. Still not great though? We died. Well, he has the same fire resistance as Holy Resistance, so maybe we'll try Rykard's Rancor. It's big. It's hot. I fell on the way, but I quit out, so we don't have to count that. And now let's try this new New hotness? Terrible. <laughs> Uh, okay, so bosses don't come much bigger than him. So if it's not working here, let's go try it on a smaller boss, I guess. Radagon has literally 0% fire resistance, and uh, it's still bad. We could boost it by farming the Magma Staff for 10% more damage, but this is, uh, this is just really terrible. So, let's go back to the old meme. We respec again, even though we can't boost the standard with the Physic tier. And Radagon's Pierce resistance is 35%. So, should be worse, but... It's so much better, just like infinitely better. I'm sure you're set up with seppuku, Lord of Bloods, hot swap to the mushroom crown, fetid pot at your feet, stop on your right foot, and don't forget it. Set up makes spells good, but my friend, just go get a sharp stick. Look what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. Even on Elden Beast, it's just so much better. I guess I used some Volcano Pots while he was stunned. That's a fun little trick to get some more damage. And our resistance is high enough to make the Elden Stars better. Roxas, that's a stick. And that's what beat the Elden Beast. Not a spell that should be specifically good for this fight. Wahoo. Okay, so let's get a bigger, sharper stick. The Serpent Hunter, a pretty good weapon we already started leveling up. The Somber Nine is in for Amazula, then we beat down the Penguin Noble and Blue Skidoo into Mogwin Palace. Summon the Nox Sisters to protect us from the Sanguine Noble, while we buy some rune arcs, they fail, we died. But we got a somber dragon stone from the frogs without dying, and that's nice. What's not nice is the Serpent Hunter doesn't really do that much more damage than the Commander's standards, so this was a huge waste of time. Whoops. We've been able to beat Moog before he starts phase two before, and our damage is more boosted than it's ever been, so this should work. It didn't work. We got deleted by the transition. And a few more times before just leaving to go get the Moog Physic tier. It doesn't make you immune to the phase two transition and uh oh no 
Okay, so uh, we gotta win before phase two. It's not a fun thing, it's a necessary thing. Moog's pretty giant, so let's get the giant crusher. Then the stones we need for the crusher and Royal Knight's Resolve. It's a weapon buff that increases weapon damage by 80%. Should be nice. We have to level it up and the heavier the weapon, the more runes you need to level it up. This is the heaviest weapon in the game, unless you count the fingerprint shield, which I don't because it's a shield and shields aren't weapons. We can grab some runes from the Beast Men of Faramazula in the Dragon Barrow Cave. It's a lot of runes, but not enough. So we have to fight the Black Blade Kindred, which generally goes pretty bad. Our damage is nice though, so it actually goes fine. I honestly feel like the damage is changing from fight to fight. It's weird. Hammer maxed out. A frog joined us on the elevator back to Moog, but regrets it, so he jumps off. Helped us edge, though. Thank you, little frog. First attempt with this hammer, we can't wear a shirt without being in heavy load. We hit hard, but he starts going for phase two, so I just quit out. Next attempt, same thing happens. Quitting out saves us time. We just go right outside the arena and don't have to reapply the edge boost. It finally just works. If you struggle with Moog's phase two, here's a pro tip for you. Don't let him have one. Okay, so we have a hammer, but it's not a heavy hammer yet. If you have the strength to use the hammer, it'll be better with a heavy infusion. So back up the danger path of Stormvale, grab the Iron Wet Blade, and now we have heavy Royal Knight's Resolve. Let's go to Placidious Axe. We have the heaviest hammer of all existence. Time to meet your end. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time. God, okay, we've got four bosses left. Let's go do one of the other ones. I just hate turning the study hall upside down, getting the curse mark of death, and hugging Fia a lot. It's a pain and it takes a while. Lich Dragon Fork and Sacks is a problem if we're by the toes. We're gonna get electrocuted and we can't see what attacks he's going for. So we've gotta aim for the head. And that's good because the damage is massive, but it's also dangerous because he's throwing lightning on the water, which makes it bigger and kills us with ouchies. First try, we die. We also died the second time, but Fort of Sacks dies too, and we get to take those. Ha ha ha, I guess we need one more stream, but I'm sure this will be the last one. We have to cross the Lake of Rot, and look, I didn't get edgy for this, okay? Fake challenge, cancel it. That's a bummer. Might fuck this whole thing up. Just kidding. I know Sunk Cost is carrying you through to the end of this video like it's carrying me through the end of this run. Asiel is a big problem for our big hammer. It's annoying to chase him down and generally we trade a little bit. He just decides to do one of the attacks that hits us though, and we can't take it. So, ow, ow, ow. Ow. Eventually we just get the hits off, can't really give a good play-by-play. -play. This time we just run in and hit it enough that we win. Only two bosses left. How long could that take? Been a long, long time. We don't even get two Melania without dying. I figured maybe if Placidious Axe was giving us trouble, Melania might go better. I was wrong. We fall off the roots after the Rotter fall. After that, no deaths, grab the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman and head into Melania. Immediately run away as she dashes in, summon the sisters, and die. Yeah, Royal Knight's Resolve does some good damage. It fucking should. 20% Red Feather, 5% from the shield, and 80% from the weapon for a nice 120% damage buff, all stacking together. So actually, with the heaviest hammer in the game, I feel like it should be better. Anyway, Ducky Dance is real bad. Good for you if you can dodge it. I've seen the videos, I've tried the suggested guides, but they're just playing on a PC and modding our hitboxes to be smaller or non-existent. It's a lie. You can't dodge it. Anyone saying you can in the comments is a liar. New strat. Instead of buffing ourselves, what if we made Melania worse? Remember kids, if you're struggling with a rival, you don't have to best them just to drag them down to your shitty level. Chilling Mist coats our hammer with some frostbite. Proccing that makes Melania take 20% more damage from our hits, not just the one like the Royal Knight's Resolve. We get to phase two for the first time and use some Volcano Pots while she's in the Onion. Big fire damage, it's a pretty nice way to start phase two. Volcano Pots scale with strength and dex. We die anyway, then die a bunch more times before trying another run with the Royal Knight's Resolve. Worth noting, this is where all the rune arcs go. If you're wondering where they are later, yeah, it's uh, it's not great. We get to phase two again, but no, just doesn't work. Every time we get there, it just doesn't work. After about an hour of flailing and dying over and over again, we give up. But also, started doing some math. With a 20% defense boost from the Dragon Crest Great Shield, 20% from the Commander Standard, 10% from the Opaline Hard Tier, and Black Flame's Protection gives us another 35% damage resistance. That's a body buff, so it should stack with the Aura buff from the Standard. And a little bit more than 20% physical resistance from our starting armor. That should add up to 105% damage reduction before we've even counted the Blue Feathered Branch Sword or the Twin Bird Kite Shield. But it stops around 70, which means only 85% after we get the Branch Sword activated. I'm not saying 
saying we should be immune to or heal damage taken with enough buffs permanently, but considering we'd have to reapply that aura buff every 30 seconds and the body buff every 70 seconds and only get three minutes of boost from the physic tier, I really don't think it's that unreasonable to be invincible for 30 seconds. Like all of this setup for 30 seconds sounds kind of fair to me, especially considering Melania heals when she hits your shield and does no damage to you, so she'd still be healing you if she hit you. There's still incentive not to get hit. Anyway, that's the end of stream four, and I really thought I was just not gonna finish. It would be a pretty funny way to end the edging run anyway, but I know y'all have been great to me, so I have to pull through for you. Two bosses left. Let's get back into it. There's a cheese method we haven't tried against Placidious Axe, but we have to respec again and get another weapon. It's horny time. After all this edging, it only makes sense. But if you don't get an Envoy Longhorn before you burn down the Erd Tree, bad news. You have to farm them in the Hallig Tree. Fantastic news, though. We get so lucky and get a drop from the first Bubble Boy. Yeah, also, I didn't edge before doing this. Edging every time I would do a farming run would take forever if you know, we didn't get it on the first go, which I didn't know we were going to do. Then I grabbed the crown and died anyway. So yeah, it all balances out. We took a death. Same when we get the Somberstone 9 bell bearing to level up the horn. We need runes, and I might eventually want the Godfrey icon for something I can use to cheese Melania. Spoilers, we don't actually end up doing that, but let's fight Godfroy for both. It gets way too close, but I refuse to die to Godfroy again. We'll die to an even easier boss later. Stick around to see that. It's not enough runes, though, and we're running out of bosses to kill for runes, so it's time for one last death right bird. One last ride. And this one's in the mountaintops of the giants, so it hits way harder and goes way, way worse. Actually, not all that much worse than the Altus one, but we are like a hundred levels higher at this point. So the fact that we keep dying over and over and over again is pretty depressing. But that's obviously just because between streams, I forgot we had the big hammer. Doesn't really matter. It's slow and the erratic movement of the death right bird leads us to whiffing and getting punished two more times. So let's just fight it like we fought the other ones. Get some flowers, make some pot, and throw it with the accuracy accuracy of real life me throwing a football. Bad. But we get it. And now we have the money to level up our horn. But we didn't have another ancient dragon somber stone. Uh, kind of running out of those in the world. I guess let's go pick up Latena and bring her to the snowfield. Drop down to the cave, Untis Untis the Bloodhound Knight, and Latena is already dead. Mm, I'm sure that's fine. We can still grab her ashes. On the way to her mom, I think it's her mom, we get nuked by a turtle. Then nuked again after finding out you cannot do Latena's quest if you didn't pick her up before riding to the snowfield. Some say a waste of time. Others say an incredible waste of time. Thankfully, I did some quick Googling and found one in the capital. Y'all using Google? This site's amazing. More setup. Talk to Alex in the Radon fight to send him to Gelmnir. Kill Anastia for the Sacred Scorpion Charm. Get Fort Laid for the Fire Scorpion Charm to raise both our Holy and Fire resistance by 12% and lower our damage resistance. Sorry, the Holy is from the Sacred Scorpion boost. I wasn't saying the Fire does both, but I know someone's going to be pedantic about that. Good for you. Pat on the back. Our resistance is pretty high, but more importantly, we just kind of die anyway, so. No, it doesn't really matter if we take the damage resistance penalty. Talk to Alex in the lava. Head up to fight him, but forget to edge, so, uh... Okay, you have my permission to laugh at that one. That one's pretty funny. We one-shot him. I, I can't believe I had to kill my best friend. So sad. I fell off the cliff again, going for the Golden Lightning Fortification twice. But the second time after we grabbed it, I just wanted to get out of there fast and couldn't warp. Then we respect to a faith build. Spells are actually great. Weapons are terrible. With all that set up, we're getting 20% from the Branch Sword, 20% from the Holy Tier, 15% from the Jar Shard, 15% from our hat, 15% from Golden Val, and 12% from the Sacred Scorpion. That's a 145% damage boost stacking together for the bubbles, and hey, I'm pretty sure the time it took me to read off those buffs was longer than the fight. The boss didn't even take that long. So now the rest of this is just for Melania. There's a lot left. Melania's bad. First, leveling Rolo. The Spirit Ash with two big-ass swords. They have bleed. They breathe fire. They're pretty great against Melania if you killed Celibus and can't get the Poop Man Ashes. Or don't want to go to the Moonlight Altar for Tish. Maybe, hypothetically, you have an aversion to Tish because everyone always just says, Oh, just go get Tish. Hey! You! 
You go get Tish. You make the video. You get your hammer and you take it up with him. Anyway, we get all the stuff to level him up and fight a Don. It's so fast, but we get our Melania killer, Flame of the Fell Gods. I'd love to use Blasphemous Blade, but the regen means we can't. I just want this spell to knock our ass down. We can boost the damage by going into the Giant Conquering Hero's Grave and getting the Giant Seal. That's 20% extra damage on Fire Giant spells, then level it up and bubble Garonk for the Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. There was another solution I was going to maybe try against Melania, which would have required another somber weapon, so I went to the Altus Tunnel. And remember when I said we died to a more embarrassing enemy than Godefroy? We died to the Crystallians. Don't laugh at that. Cry with me. All our work pays off. When we go into Melania, Flame of the Fell God knocks her on her ass and does huge damage. She has 0% fire resistance if she's not on the water. It's killer. Rolo's damage, also fantastic. And he has this great pancake attack where he just jumps forward and slams both of his swords down, does it three times. It rules. However, she's still Melania. So the Ducky Dance destroys us and pretty much destroys Rolo and turns him into a juice box to heal her up almost to full every time she hits him with it. It sucks. We're getting to phase two more consistently but it's really, really bad. Sometimes when we knock her down, we run in with the horns and use the hammer element of it to smack her. That's good stance pressure and damage. It's the right move, especially before she's at the ducky dance threshold, which I think is 75% of her health. We're not doing every death. Lord knows this is already going to be a bit of a long video, but this one, this one's pretty fun. Look at her health at the start of the crit. I'd be forgiven for thinking this is going to put her in phase two. So I try to buff up again with flame grant me strength, but she just decides not to go to phase too. Rolo even hits her after our crit, so if there was a sliver left, she should have gone to phase two. She just said no. No thanks. That one is good. Then we died a bunch more times. Strategy change. Let's get another spell. One spell isn't working. Get two spells. We get up on the turtle's back for another Malekith Remembrance and the Black Blade spell. It will take 10% of her health off temporarily and do some holy damage over time. Memory Stone for Money, then back at it again. It doesn't help much. It's not worse, but it's not better. It's a decent way to finish off a phase, but then it doesn't really do much. And she's also pretty goddamn good at dodging it. Bunch more deaths. Some science here. I tried to run under her during the clone attack, but she has a whirlwind underneath her that will kill you. Didn't know that. Maybe you didn't either. I think the natural instinct during most of her attacks is to just run the fuck away, and that is the correct instinct for the attack of the clones. Quick mental health check after total death 165. How we doing past Phil? I hope Moog forgets to feed Mikola and Mikola starves to death. You have therapy tomorrow, by the way. Make sure you're not late for that. Die a bunch more than new strat. Don't bring Rolo for phase one. We need him for phase two, and we can just summon the balls and run away. It works great. It works good. Okay. It works better. Up, oh, I'm dead. Yeah. It works fine. The first two balls we can stay in and kind of bait her to do the kick but that will put her into Ducky Dance range. Then we need to be very far away from her to avoid the first two spheres of the Ducky and can roll under the third. Now keep in mind, sometimes she's gonna avoid those balls. Sometimes she's gonna decide to just kill you anyway. It's Melania, this is her fight, you're just a guest. Summoning Rolo for phase two is a little better, but boy, she just really does love slurping him up. Another new strategy, make Gowry sad. He says Millicent is his daughter and Melania's, and apparently I'm the dumbass for thinking that means they're her parents. He is an adoptive father. We're killing his adoptive daughter. She was born in an onion after Melania fought her half-brother to a draw and summoned the power of a stinky god that's basically leprosy she's had from childhood because her space brother was too strong because he loves his horse a lot. That makes way more sense than my theory that Melania is into dudes. I wonder if her roommate Finlay knows she's a lesbian. Anyway, after killing Millicent, we kill Gowry and get a talisman that makes our incantations do 8% more damage. Then we die a bunch more anyway. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Honestly, I have a trip coming up. We beat the Elden Beast, so maybe edging doesn't get to do all remembrances. It would be thematically consistent if it didn't get to finish. So here's our best attempt. But spoilers, we die at the end of this one. Get the buffs up. That's 20% from the Red Feather, 20% from the Physic Tier, 20% from Flame Grammy Strength, 20% from the Giant Seal, 15% from the Golden Vow, 12% from the Fire Scorpion, 8% from the Gowry Talisman, and 5% from the Kite Shield. It's a 202% total damage boost after everything stacks. She has no fire resistance off the water, and it's good, but shouldn't it be better? Whatever. Two balls go out before we're in ducky phase. Here's what I mean when I say we gotta be far enough away to run. We get to avoid it. 
then a ball and bait a kick to keep her in tight and get hit. And the next ball, she just kind of walks into it and takes it. She duckies while we're against a wall, but somehow we live that? Run away and get another ball out. Again, just sort of stand still for this one, thanks so much. Another one, she just kind of takes it. I don't know why she sometimes decides to just walk into it, but uh, we take those. Third one whiffs, we reset Golden Vow, get one more out before phase two. Obviously, while she's in recovery from the onion attack, we can send out another ball. We're not bringing Rolo in. Last time we brought him in, she healed all the way up to full before we got to deal any damage. So instead, we're just gonna run away, throw out balls. But we were too far away after the attack of the clones. Get another ball out, bait some melee attacks, it works. Her dives make her avoid a few of our balls, but then it's time for another onion and we can get another ball off for free. We even have time to reset Flame Grammy's strength. But the ball missed, big bummer. Another one hits after the dive attack then during the attack of the clones connects with her knocking her out of the air very satisfying she's so close and so are we it would be fitting if the edging run didn't finish but it would be even more fitting if it finished with one of our balls exploding finishing her off while she finishes us off at 17 hours and 29 minutes of edging we won killing 57 bosses and dying 193 times which also means over an hour and a half of just stroking the sword to get to the edge with each session taking 30 seconds at least not even counting the times we had to reset after accidentally resting at a grace that's f tier but top of f tier it was better than the heavy run and i have a theory as to why while the 30 seconds of stroking is going to slow down our boss time it actually helped pad our average death time by at least 30 seconds our strategy strategy against bosses also led us taking hits and having to back off while the regen healed up. So it was slower to kill bosses, but also slower to die. But yeah, this is awful. I think these talismans have a decent purpose, but as a backup, not as your primary build. Who could have guessed? Being at full health is better. To watch these runs live, join the Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to give us money. It's where we get to keep most of it. Make sure you're subscribed. It's free. It helps us out a lot. Oh, and it's my frickin' birthday today. Yeah, subscribe for my birthday.